Shannon Sharp is a damn fool, and considering who he works with, that's saying something. Anthony Davis might return to the Lakers as early as next week, and the Rams general manager hints at regretting effing those picks. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. So it is January 21st, 2023. I am stranded in the Columbus, Ohio airport, waiting for the flight home to my blushing bride. So let's talk a little LA sports while we have the chance. If you like the content we put out, click the clack the like button, click the clack the subscribe button. There's a notifications bell. Hit that to let you know when we drop new content. Sharing is caring, let people know we exist, and by all means, comment. After all, do you really think I want to meet random people in an airport? <laughs> so before we go through the news and notes, quick look at the scoreboard. Last night, mm, Russell Westbrook dropped 29 points, and there was a crucial steal that led to a layup for Dennis Schrader in the waning seconds as the Lakers upset Memphis 122-121. to 121. We'll talk a little bit more about what was going on at the arena in a minute. By the way, random question. Uh, do you think Kawhi Leonard likes to send messages after all these years to the Spurs? 36 points? Yeah, I think that's a message. Clippers 131, San Antonio 126. Meanwhile, today, it's loaded. And some of this stuff is really good. Number five, UCLA is at number 11, Arizona, at about 11 a.m. or noon. Uh, it's probably the game of the day in college basketball. UCLA goes into Tucson with a 14-game winning streak. And I'm hoping I get off the plane in time for this one. Also, USC is at Arizona State. That's going to be at 7 o'clock. The Lakers are playing on back-to-back -back days. They're going to be up at Portland at 7. The Clippers are at Dallas at 1230. And the Kings will be in Nashville. This game is at 5 o'clock. I'm a huge fan of airports, I got to tell you. Now, we should be talking about how L.A. played last night, the grit, the, the, the focus, the, the emphasis on determination. We could be talking about how Anthony Davis might be back next week. But no, 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 no. We don't get to talk about any of that. And that's all due to unapologetic, middle-aged, hot-take attention whore Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp, who should know better because as a former athlete, you know you don't want random people walking onto the field of play, walked onto the court at Crypto.com Arena at halftime and got into a shouting match with Memphis's Dylan Brooks, Memphis's Steven Adams, and John Moran's dad. So, big golf clap. Big golf clap for the maturity of a 54-year-old attention whore, Shannon Sharp. Well done. Arena officials had to run in. NBA refs had to run in to break it up. Now, of course, no punches were thrown. Let's be real. Would you expect NBA players to throw punches? Please. But still, after it all happened, both sides, they go running off to the press. They puff up their chest and they start bragging about how badass they think they are, even though nobody got thrown out. Here's the deal. I blame Shannon Sharp because you're 50 freaking four years old. What are you doing trying to go 20 year olds into fist fights? Grow the hell up. I mean, nobody even remembers who this clown is, right? They, or I should say, nobody remembers this clown as one of the greatest tight ends of all time. Nobody. Nobody, won, nobody outside of Denver remembers he won Super Bowls. Nobody remembers he's in the Hall of Fame. If he were simply just a cool dude in his retirement, he would be revered. People would love the man. They would look at him in awe. But he made the biggest mistake of his life. You have to make correct decisions. And one of the stupidest decisions that you could ever make is choosing to sit next to Skip Bayless for extended periods of time. What was that decision? I'm here to tell you, being a douchebag is clearly more contagious than the COVID virus because that clearly rubs off on everybody around Skip Bayless. You are not immune. There's no, there's no vaccine to protect you from Skip Bayless and his douchebaggery. It's not happening. You can't wear an N95 mask to protect you from that douchebaggery. It's going to infect you. 
You, you are not the man you think you are, Shannon, Mr. Sharp. Oh, you may still lift weights. You may still be in shape. You may still wear suits. You, you may have more Botox in your face than John Kerry. You are not the man that you think you are. And I'll know you're not the man you think you are. Here's why. Because every time the Lakers are on ESPN, the camera pans a crowd for celebrities. And they go, ooh, wow, that's Andy Garcia. He's a star. Oh, my God, that's Jack Nicholson. He's a star. Who's that idiot who just ran onto the court for no reason? Is that? Isn't that that guy who played for the Broncos? Dude, 25 years ago, it was your time. You had the shine. You had the, all the lights were on you when it was when you was 25 years ago and you were in the prime of your career. It is not your time now. You are not in the prime of your career. You are the old man at the club trying to chase college chicks. It is not a good look ever. And and you might sit there going to the press after saying, yeah, man, they don't want no smoke. They don't want my problems. They don't want my smoke. And you know what? Even if you see this clip and you get pissed at me, I don't want your smoke. And there's a reason I don't want your smoke. It's because I'm a 54 year old grown ass man with a wife who has kids. It's called setting an example. I don't go chasing after 20 year old chicks. I don't go trying to pick fights with 20 year old dudes. Cause I'm a grown ass man. You realize when you're a grown ass man that going to jail is something for stupid people. Public fighting, public altercations is for stupid people. You know, a couple of weeks ago, you know, you, you got into that little scrap with uh, Skippy on your little hot take sports show, right? And it looked like everybody thought you were going to quit the show. And you looked like the mature one for a moment. Maybe you should reconsider this whole, should I quit my little hot take show? Maybe you need to grow the hell up. Anthony Davis might return next week. Laker sources told that to ESPN. He's been out for a month with a foot injury. Now, if you've ever seen professional basketball players' feet, it'll make you puke in a bucket on the spot. It's really nasty. <coughs> so it doesn't surprise me that he's had foot problems. He was enjoying a career renaissance this year, scoring at least 24 points a game before the foot acted up. L.A. is also going to reassess Lonnie Walker's knee today. He's been out since December. <coughs> Pardon me. Rams general manager Les Snead said he knew at some point he would have to eat his words, specifically the words F them picks. Now, he said he was just having fun with the comment because if he truly believed in effing picks, he would just give them to division rivals and be done with it. Now, L.A. has 10 picks in the upcoming draft, they believe, compensation picks and whatnot. And he does recognize that he's going to have to nail them picks, which is ironic because that's a synonym for effing. By the way, in, a, in an unrelated note, deeping is my new word for sex, but that's another story for another channel. By the way, uh, Rams assistant head coach Thomas Brown, he's been interviewing for head coaching positions around the league. He is also going to interview for the open offensive coordinator position with the Washington Commanders. Chargers general manager Tom Telesco said Justin Herbert will be involved in the process of finding a new offensive coordinator. In my opinion, that's probably the right call. Also, Telesco added that wide receiver Keenan Allen will not, at least he strongly indicated, will not be a salary cap casualty in the offseason which is interesting. The Chargers are up against the cap. I believe they would save approximately $17.4 million if they cut him. A California Democrat lawmaker, Chris Holden, the man represents Pasadena, he has introduced legislation that is a, what I would call a solution looking for a problem. We'll get to why I mean that in a moment. It looks to pay athletes what he considers to be, quote, fair market value, unquote. And the reason I call it a solution looking for a problem is there's NIL. Theoretically, 
that's supposed to be the solution to the problem. The lawmaker was asked what is fair market value, and it is in, the, in his uh, bill. He estimates that a student athlete would be worth an equal share of half of the team's revenue minus the scholarships. So let's say, for example, you're USC's football team. You have 50 scholarship players, you make $100 million. Well, from that law, if it, I should say from that bill, if it became a law, every player from Caleb Williams right down to the long snapper would get a million dollars each. Then you start running the numbers for other sports, and that's where it runs into a problem. Sports Illustrated did so for the UCLA Athletics Department. Men's basketball, the players would get $389,000 each. The football players would make $185,000 each. Women's gymnastics, $5,500 each. Women's volleyball, $871. And nobody else gets a dime. Not even women's basketball. You don't think the Title IX federal people would have... You don't think the federal government would have a problem with that? Title IX regulators wouldn't have a problem with that? Because, yeah, they'd have a problem with that. They'd have a big problem with that. So, no, I don't think this law is a particularly well-hashed-out uh, idea. Um, again, solution looking for a problem. Paul George of the Clippers said that a kid hit his brand-new car, drove off. It's a hit and run. Did he call the police? Nope. Did he call his insurance group? No. Instead, he took a photo of the kid and doxed him on social media, asked if anybody knew who he was. That's not smart. That's not smart. Hours later, George's wife posted, Got him! And then everybody wiped their social media accounts for what happened next. Which makes me believe the police are eventually going to get involved anyway. Look, guys. Mr. George. You do realize you make tens of millions of dollars every single year, right? A fender bender? You, you could buy a new car pretty much every day almost for the rest of your life. And you wanted to find a kid... You, you're you willing to risk the tens of millions of dollars that you make every single year? You're willing to risk your career on being a vigilante? You, what are you, Batman? You think you're Bruce Wayne? Oh, somebody, somebody ran into the Batmobile. Once I get this tire replaced, his ass is grass. I'm not, I'm not looking for the Riddler now. What in the hell is your... The police are there for a reason. You have insurance for a reason. Your insurance is not going to go up that high. You went vigilante on a kid. Paul George used to give himself nicknames like Playoff P and whatnot. I'm really considering calling him Batman for this. Good Lord. The Dodgers have rehired Chris Woodward as a front office assistant. He was a Dodgers third base coach uh, for a few years. Texas had hired him away to be their manager. The Rangers went 211-287 during his tenure. Uh, and then, of course, he got fired. Look, man, I saw those Rangers teams. They did not give that poor bastard squat to work with. So welcome back to L.A. It'll be nice to – I'm sure it'll feel nice to be on the winning side for a change. Now – if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We talk LA sports every single day. Don't forget to comment. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kiev Corte El Queso production. Take care.